Uh, uh, stuck inside. So a lot of times, whether I'm stuck inside or not, over the years, I mean, this is like when I started learning golf. I was doing stuff in the house. Just understanding feels and angles and risk conditions all through feel. You know, when I was 16, 17, starting to play golf, I didn't understand anything. I was just doing things, and I and I discovered if I did it like this, it'd go low, and if I did it like this, it would go high. So when I work in the house, which I do often, um, I'll use uh, these little guys, little tennis balls or little doggy balls, um, and then same size as a golf ball. All right, so obviously a bunch, lot lighter, a little squishy. So it gives a real close feel, and it gives a nice, you know, a nice touch around the house that I can use. So. You know, so I'll just go back and forth. I don't have much of an area here, but I just go back and forth and I'll, I'll let the face go a little bit and slide underneath and I'll go high, I'll try to get more spin. Mm -hmm. And I, all I'm doing is exploring different wrist conditions to get something slightly different and different shaft assemblies to just to see what it does. And so, you know, a lot of my online students that I work with now, I have them do the same thing. Or I say, hey, you don't need to be hitting balls all the time. You can just go discover new fields with with what, you know, if I do this with my wrist or let it go a little bit, or if I go a stronger grip or weaker grip, whatever it is, I, I explore feels as long as it stays within the same book that you're working with, whether it's my information or somebody else's, it's, it's staying along those lines, you know, but exploring different fields, especially at this time, because we're, you know, stuck inside a lot, uh, you can discover a lot about, you know, how to do different things. I'll just, you know, have a little target and I'll, you know, do a little more shaft lean and get the ball back in the stance and I hold it and just seeing what it does and discovering little feels turning the face down letting it open up a little bit so this one I'm just going back slow getting my wrists assembled and this is something Brendan and I worked on at Journey a month ago with his chipping he would take his arms way out here and I'm like, well I don't want my arms way out there for a little shot. I'd rather have it assemble with the wrist a little bit and just hit a little pitch. Alright? So I'll just do it over and over and go back and forth. Eric, how do you go from the state of kind of constant experimentation, constant constant trying different things? Because a lot of golfers, especially who don't play that often, will feel that way on the golf course like every shot i'm trying something different oh this worked one time how do you go from like doing this inside to then start to build some confidence in certain fields and matching that to certain trajectories at, at some point you're going to fall into a feel that you really like and the all the explore, ex, exploration of fields and we did it uh, the day on the range a couple months ago where i have more combinations than you do so I can do more. So how did I get those combinations figured out with tennis balls in the house just doing them? Yeah. But at some point, there's going to be a go-to shot that you're comfortable with. But the exploration over time in your golfing career, you're going to start to use those things more and more and discover that, hey, this works on the golf course. You know, I'm messing around with it here in the house. Do you do a thing that, like I've heard Jim Furyk does, and I've seen some other uh, local pros do it too, where where they they keep a notebook of kind of like a swing journal of like what's been working with, and, I'm, and I've heard that like Furyk, so he flips through this notebook, and sometimes something that he felt 20 years ago will will connect with him today. Uh, I did. I've, I've done that in the past, and I was I was a terrible note taker in high school and college. So when I tried to put thoughts or feels down in a notebook, I would never, I'd never do it proper enough to go back and know what the heck I was trying to discover or feel. So, so I've done it, but I never really did it enough or good enough to go back to it. And over the lifetime of your golf, the, the feels get ingrained. And to go back, for me to go back to a notebook, uh, then I'm straying from my, for me, for my fields. And I'd rather rediscover them knowing that, hey, they're, they're in there, just what are they? And how do, I, how do I pull them back out without going back to, okay, make sure you... Because you're just not that same person anymore. I'm not that same person yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. so, so to go back to that, it's like, all right, well, if it wasn't that valuable then for me to keep working on it, then I might not need it now. I mean, it's all, it's all 
for for coaching soccer, we would go through so many different skills to get ball mastery. And a, a player, if we go through, if we go through, let's say, uh, 20 different skills and, and just working off the ball, when a player develops their actual game, their go-to on the, on the pitch is usually like three, maybe, maybe four tops. But we go through all of those different 20 skills to get ball mastery. So we can go through all these different explorations of fields and angles to get club mastery, but we don't really need to use them all. So I don't need to write them down and remember them all. So you're saying that even if you have a way that works for you and you like it, it's still worthwhile to experiment with different ways of doing it. It kind of shores up your, your stock way of doing it even better. Yeah. All right, so let's let's grab uh, a couple of those balls back. Sarah, catch this one for us on, on video here. Ah. All right, so let's grab a couple of those balls and, and just give us some ideas because some people may not even know, like what would be, what would be a, uh, like, okay, I'm gonna hit this one with this kind of feel, that kind of yeah. feel, you know? I know that that was a thing that Sevy just had uh, celebrated his birthday. Uh, he that was a, a big thing of his that he would see like spin, no spin, and like yeah. he was just in the hand. So for me, if I'm gonna go low with this tennis ball, I'm gonna assemble the wrist and I'm gonna kind of pull the handle through a little bit. So to go here, come down, and this this is leading. This goes and this will stay pushing, keeping this face, and this face might even rotate a little bit to flight it down. So more of like a hinge and hold style, like a Phil Mickelson like talks about? Hold. And we yeah. probably see that a lot on the PGA Tour where, where it's just here, and then the left arm is falling down in front of us, this angle gets let go, and I'm turning just slightly enough to carry this arm through. And if I stop turning, then nothing's carrying my left arm through and that the head will wanna go. So I need just enough pivot but I'm not real active with the lower body. Again, I'm, I've got just enough pivot to support what's moving up here, supporting my hands and arms moving. So a little hinge and then a little pivot. A little hinge and a little pivot. Let's see it. Yep. Okay, so now what's, what's an, you would maybe hit a couple like feeling that, and what's another feel that you would go then into, would, experiment with? I could open this face up a little bit. I can move the ball up in my stance. This might hinge a little bit, but it's gonna come outside the line some. So it can come across, similar to a bunker shot. And then I'm letting this head go. And I'm throwing it underneath, keeping it open, and actually letting that left hand. So this would hinge up and come down. And it's almost like I feel my arm stay right by my side and letting this go, letting letting my left wrist cup like this so that face stays open and I'm sliding the club underneath the ball with a little bit of speed to get that little that little cutty motion. So this one is, is more hinged to the outside and then again to the left with an open face on yeah. both sides, yeah. Yeah, so it'll go up a little. A little higher. <laughs> So yeah. a lot more spin, it'll come up a little higher, go a little bit softer. You know, so so doing it in here, and again, the transition transition is very similar, it's very soft, not rushing anything. Just letting that head slide underneath a little bit. So you talked about a lot of different variables like of uh, you know, different kinds of hinges, different kinds of uh, face at address, and also different kind of release patterns with the body and the hands. In chipping, is there anything that you would say is like, okay, there's, you can do a lot of different things, but this one thing you should probably stick with on almost every chip? Um, I, I like to, I like to, to take uh, the, the right amount of swing. So it's not too long, it's not too short where I have to accelerate or decelerate. So finding, finding the pace that matches the trajectory and the, the speed of the shot. Um, I do like to lead with my left hand. So most chipping for me 
is assemble just a little bit of the wrist, and then it's that hinge and hold. So, so almost never, of all these different variations you're doing, almost never are you letting the, it go to the point where the, the head is passing the hands before impact. Just for basic pitching and chipping, not very often. And it depends for me because I have a real strong grip and a slightly closed club face, so I do have to let that head go a little bit to get some loft. If I don't, then I'm going to be hitting a fairly fast pitch. So. So when I get it assembled, my head is, my face is a little bit closed, and if I keep this hand leading too much and turn it down, it's coming fast. So, so I do let it go the right amount, depending on the shot I want to hit. Here you go. All right. All right, Eric, thanks. Where can people find you? Uh, Easy Golf 60. Easy so, E. Easy E. I don't even know my own Instagram. Right. Brendan will post it down there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been the best place for people to, to, to track me down and give me a DM on, on Instagram. Great. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Thanks.